This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTTER for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on dudes and dudettes? Welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Bandai Japan. So why don't we get things started with the 1-100 scale Master Grade New Gundam Verka from the feature length film Char's Counter-Attack. And without further ado, let's get to it. Welcome back my dudes and dudes to the most highly requested and definitely one of the most demanding Master Grade that everyone's been asking me to build on this channel and that's none other going to be the Master Grade Verka New Gundam. Now, I am no stranger when it comes to the Verka series because my very first Verka kit was the Master Grade Sazabi. And I absolutely had a lot of fun building that kit four years ago, but something told me I needed to build the Furka New Gundam. So what do we get in the box art? Right off the bat, you're gonna notice that we got a brief description on the actual mobile suit itself, piloted by Amuro Ray, piloting the new RX-93 Gundam from the Shards Counter-Attack feature lane film. And it gives you a really cool looking action base on which you can put the funnels on so that way they can set up on their own. On the other side, you get a good idea on what you can expect for weapon accessories. Everything down to funnels, two beam sabers, assault rifle, bazooka and a shield and also a good layout on what you can do for action poses and where you can actually place the weapon accessories on this beast of a Gundam. So enough about that, what's inside the box? Now, when it comes to the Verka box presentation, they are always on point, really showing you the goods right up front, which is the instruction manual, which gives you a good history on what this mobile suit really went through when it came to the design process. Everything down to illustrations, 3D modelings on what parts can open and close to expose that awesome cycle frame. While the second page gives you a brief history on what this mobile suit was designed to go head to head against the Sazabi piloted by Shar Osnabal. Now, when you're glancing through the pages, you're going to notice that this mobile suit definitely has a feature where you can actually install a Bendai LED light to the head, which isn't that great, while at the same time giving you a vague understanding of how to really integrate all those funnels into one single unit to connect it in the very back. As for the last page, it gives you a whole rundown on how to apply the water slide decals, which I have to admit, there are a lot of water slide decals for this mobile suit, while at the very second to last page gives you a color chart to add some custom flair if you choose to do so to paint the little figurine, as well as the Gundam. So, piece of cake right well guess what you are wrong because this kit is definitely going to take you for a ride so first runners up we're going to get a very brief look at the actual weapon accessories of this gundam but one thing i need to stress upon is these unique water slide decals and sticker decals so first and foremost we're going to take a look at the foil sticker decals which are designed to illuminate the eyes camera module as well as the cycle frame clear pieces while on the other side you get these weird sticker decals for particular armor pieces to pop out on the mobile suit gundam while at the same time you get this insane chart of water slide decals that I personally am not going to use every single one of them because they do look cool but at the same time when you apply all of them onto the decal it is a bit distracting. Next runners up we're going to get a handful of white pieces while at the same time you get pre-molded hands that actually have some form articulation. You also get two runners that are packed to the brim with navy blue pieces for the Gundam as well as a good assortment of inner frame pieces of Gundam that are nice dark and gray, a handful of yellow pieces that are going to be used for the knees, elbows, funnels and whatnot, two beam sabers, and a small assortment of red pieces for the face as well as ammunition for the bazooka and more inner frame pieces for the Gundam and a sweet looking action base. Now this mobile suit does come with clear pieces but that's going to be primarily used for the inner frame Gundam to expose that cycle frame. Now before I get started doing any kind of installation, I need to evaluate on what is going to be the most adequate light to illuminate the eyes correctly, because the piping system in the head is actually done quite well, but what really sets it back is the poor design of the LED light that was actually initially designed for this Gundam. It's not very bright, it tends to flicker on and off, so what I'm going to really need to illuminate that eye correctly is going to be using a mega LED light from Evans Designs. Now the clear white piece that comes equipped with this is not adequate, but the kit does come with the same shape piece that is actually a transparent green which not only illuminates the eye correctly but it actually illuminates the eyes the camera module correctly to the point where it's actually a clean green blue color spectrum so to make this effect look really nice and authentic i've already taken the liberty of actually cutting out the eye pieces so that way you are stuck with the like Zoro like mass when it's completed. And if you do it correctly, it's going to look really, really good over the eyes because if you do it traditionally, which is actually painting the whole entire area, it's going to look a little bit wonky and there's obviously going to be spots you're going to be missed. So I think this method works just fine.
first forearm done, I need to get started on the second arm, but before that I need to really stress upon some problems I was having when it came to light refracting. So when you apply a sticker like decal that has like a refractive foil, that should work really well with the LED light, but for some reason I was actually having some failed attempts of doing that. In the past I just used transparent paper and that actually got the effect working, but this time around using actual refractive foil didn't quite work, so I ended up actually cutting out a piece and then gluing the LED light on there. But eventually down the road as I was finishing the kit, I just opted out not using the foil stickers at all. Because they tend to get into the way and they tend to really ruin the effect that I'm trying to really pull off. ready to actually construct the main torso area, I had a bit of a situation when it came to actually painting the pilot. By no means the pilot came out great, I really enjoyed painting the little figurines and then putting them inside the cockpit so that way you make it really authentic. But for this particular build it is literally pointless to paint this pilot because once he's snugged in there you will not see him at all. He is so far deep in there. Now if you want to put an LED light in there that's fine but at the same time it will be a bit distracting when the final piece is done. So I opted out not putting an LED light in there because there are so many lights that are actually being installed in the torso right now it just seems really unnecessary so I opted out just not putting one there. But for those who build this guy don't even bother painting the figurine just leave it alone.
this next process, I think there's a lot of people that get the failed misconception that you will be able to pull off a lot of action poses once you get the LED lights installed. And unfortunately, when it comes to that, it is very constricted to the point where you won't be able to actually do a complete knee bend. I mean, you'll be able to move the foot and maybe articulate the, the pivot ball joint on the hip slightly. But when it comes to doing a full bend at the knee, that is not going to be possible due to the fact that the length of the wire that I'm working with is rather short. While at the same time, if the wire was longer, it would definitely create a nasty cluster at the very end. So for those who are actually going to do LED lights, just keep in mind that this guy is going to be permanently stuck in a static pose.
Alright my dudes and dudes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this model kit because I actually had a lot of fun, but at the same time I was really stressing out when it came to installing the LED lights for this particular mobile suit, so let's get into it shall we? 
So the number one thing that I was very, very critical about making this thing look really, really good was cable management. Because the first time I attempted to do this was to strike build Gundam. I think it was like two years ago. And when I built that kit, I was very happy with the outcome because it was as authentic as you would see in the actual anime. But the one thing that really stood out the back was all that mishmash, thick wired of all the can um, all the wires that were just pretty much stuck back there. Um, and a lot of it had to do with the fact because I was dealing with long and short and thick and wide wires, so I had to put it somewhere. And logically, it felt like the smart thing to do was to put it in the lower back spine of the Gundam, and it worked. But when I look back at it now, um, I'm not happy with the craftsmanship there. It's very sloppy. It's very last minute thinking, and I know down the road, it's going to lead to a lot of electrical shortages because you're dealing with small, short, thin wires that eventually over time will break and snap. So with this particular build, I want to try to avoid that as much as possible. So I worked with much more thinner wires while at the same time constricting all the wires from the very top to the lower spine and all the way down to the lower hip part of the Gundam. So all the thick wires at the very end are actually based at the very bottom of the hips and that's what I really wanted to do and I was very successful with that because it made everything look nice and clean. But with that clean work comes with some sacrifices and limitations and that basically boils down to poor articulation to the legs all the way to the hip because any kind of further movement can actually strip, damage, or break the wires, and I was already okay with that. My primary focus was to actually make it as authentic that I would see on the box art, and I felt that I was very successful with that. But on the other hand, I can truly see why this kit has a lot of like hate and love behind it, and the small hate has to do with the funnels. They are not the most stable pieces of plastic that it connects to the back. The connector that connects it to the backpack unit is quite fine. It's meant to be loose, but when you interconnect the funnels together and move them just, just slightly, they will fall off, and that is a bit frustrating. The action base, it's okay. There's nothing special about it. I mean, I guess that's what they were able to get that $80 price hike up. But it is what it is. It gets the job done if you want to put it on a nice action base and show it off. But let's take a step back and really reflect on the actual engineering for this mobile suit as well as the art style because I feel that people are a bit distracted when it comes to appearance. And I think a lot of you will agree with me and that basically boils down to the face. The face is slightly elongated compared to the real greats where it's a little bit more scrunched in which you know makes it look a little bit more modern but i'm actually okay with the slightly elongated um gundam mouth it just looks really cool it's dated i i get it but it works for what it was doing back at the time another thing that's really cool to mention is the weapon accessories i love the bazooka i think it's a nice little accessory to add to it as well as a beam rifle magnum and the actual beam saber hilt is uniquely designed, kind of reminiscent of like a custom made lightsaber. And I actually, I, I just like the way how it's designed. It looks really, really cool. But the overall design for the Gundam, it is beautiful. I, I have no idea why Bendai has not really hit the perfect grade button for this guy. It is beautiful. I can understand why people really, really like it and why everyone was literally asking me, build it. You're going to hate the funnels. You're gonna hate the LED, but I know you got the skills enough to make it look really, really cool. And it was just fun. If I didn't have to worry about the LED lights and just build it straight up as is, I'm pretty sure I can pull off some pretty cool action poses. But like I said before, I'm okay with the sacrifice because at the end, it was something that was challenging. It was something that was fun. And I am looking forward to building the size of B again in the next couple months and with that dudes and dudettes thank you so much for watching this video if you guys like to see more please click on the playlist hit the like and hit that bell and subscribe and i'll see you dudes and dudettes on the next video later